Mr. Speaker, I beg to move the following motion, standing in my name, resolutions, whereas under section 10, 1091, under section 1091E of the value added tax, Act Cap 15.42, the Act, it is provided that the Minister of Finance may, by order published in the Gazette, amend the schedules to the Act. And whereas it is further provided under Section 1092 of the Act that an order made pursuant to Section 1091 of the Act is subject to an affirmative resolution of Parliament except where the amendment is to the Customs Tariffs heading. And whereas the Minister of Finance seeks approval of the draft value added tax amendment of Schedule 3, Number 4 order, to amend Schedule 3 of the Act by an affirmative resolution of Parliament to include as an exempt import or local supply the import of local supply of goods and services by the St. Lucia National Trust. Be it resolved that Parliament, by affirmative resolution, approves the draft value added tax amendment of Schedule 3, Number 4 order, which amends Schedule 3 of the Act to include as an exempt import or local supply, the import of local supply of goods and services by the St. Lucia National Trust. Mr. Speaker, this is an amendment to the value for the value added tax act that exempts the St. Lucia National Trust from the payment of VAT. Mr. Speaker, I would not like to go into the history of how the National Trust has been treated, and we want the National Trust to be able to operate in an environment free of fear and free from fear, but we also want the National Trust to be cognizant of the situation in the country, so we need them to have dialogue with the government, have dialogue with stakeholders so that we can come to a gentle balance, a balance that is normally in, in a win-win situation. The National Trust asks to assist in the cash flow by making them VAT exempt. And we agreed, Mr. Speaker, because we really want to cause the National Trust to be able to operate to be able to do the, the conservation and what they need to do to protect St. Lucia's patrimony, Mr. Speaker, to protect for the next generation the assets of St. Lucia. But the National Trust themselves must understand that they have a responsibility to work with the people of St. Lucia, to work with the various stakeholders so we can strike a balance, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I just want to give you an example of how this government does its business different from the other from the other government, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you may have seen the demolition of the old courthouse building and the old education building, Mr. Speaker. And I saw, as usual, somebody jumping in haste and saying, oh, they didn't consult the National Trust. Mr. Speaker, I have on record, because you know, Mr. Speaker, the way this government, the way we operate, Mr. Speaker, and that is why we have in the results that, that we have, is we remain focused. We remain focused. We keep our eye on the prize. And we knew that we will not end up in the same situation when the custody suite was demolished, the old prison was demolished. Mr. Speaker, let me tell you about the old prison. When people make you understand that we are just being intolerant or we are just pretending when you speak about old prisons. Mr. Speaker, I was in Mexico last month. And now, Mr. Speaker, part of the presidential palace is an old prison. And you know, so, Mr. Speaker, we, in this country, we deliberately attempt to mislead people for our own personal benefits. I had a talk of old building, old St. Jude, old building, all. Mr. Speaker, 
all buildings are archaeological assets and treasures, Mr. Speaker. They are kept. They are repaired. They are renovated, Mr. Speaker. But in St. Lucia, old building, they live in old St. Jude. Old. Mr. Speaker, when we decided to demolish the courthouse building, we wrote the National Trust. We asked them to come to inspect the building, to ask if there was anything of any value that we should have kept or restored. They visited the courthouse. They said that there were some things, pictures that should be kept. We agreed. We put that in storage. The old educational building, there was a structural assessment that that building was not fit. It had no, the structural integrity was compromised, and there was nothing there of any significant value for the National Trust. So they, they said we could destroy it. But I heard, oh, they, did, they went and also talked about National Trust for the, for the custody suites, but they didn't do it for these two buildings. You know, that is the level of misinformation that spread all, and people say it convincingly, and they jump and accuse, and accuse other people, you know, never remembering what they say. I want to inform you, Mr. Speaker, that any development that's going on in St. Lucia, we have spoken to the National Trust, we've got their opinion, and we proceed. Same thing in the Hotel uh, development at Mont, Pima, at Mont Pima. We spoke to the National Trust. But I'll tell you, Mr. Speaker, people who, who are involved in that kind of activity, they normally have disagreements because it, it, it's a normal all over the world. In fact, there's a whole party called Greenpeace that even wins seats in, in elections because of their position on, 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 on the environment, etc. So there will be disagreement sometimes. There will be things we will not agree on. There must be. You can have a society where everybody agrees on everything, but when you disagree, you disagree with truth. Not disagree with maliciousness and lies. So we are working with, with the National Trust. We restored the subvention. We restored the subvention because we not believe that because somebody disagrees with you, you must, you must victimize them. You must make them pay. You must make them suffer because they disagree with you. You must threaten them because they disagree with you. You must call them names because they disagree with you. We paid the National Trust as a pension, and we continue to pay it, Mr. Speaker. So this, this removal of VAT for National Trust is just another, another step. As we begin negotiations with the National Trust, for the use of Pigeon Point for jazz. We need to have, we need to have with the National Trust mature discussions on the use of Pigeon Point for jazz. These discussions must be mature, they must be give and take, because the jazz festival, Mr. Zusha, this year, Mr. Speaker, this year, is projected to be one of the biggest ever in the history of St. Lucia. In fact, jazz and carnival are becoming larger and larger, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I'm glad we speak about festivals, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you know now, you know now, you know now, Mr. Speaker, in October, there are some hotels that are 100% occupancy in October, in October, Mr. Speaker, there are some hotels, 100% oc occupancy, Mr. Speaker. And, Mr. Speaker, but you know, but you know, Mr. Speaker, I, the only thing, Mr. Speaker, is figures do not lie. Men lie. Some men lie, Mr. Speaker, but figures do not lie. Figures do not lie, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, when they have their own in their own narrative, they give their own stories, Mr. Speaker. Anytime you 
challenge them on the facts, they go around. Maybe that's something we, we understand. You challenge them on the facts, they move away. Exactly. You say something that's factual, they say something else. Yeah. They never did the facts. The Eastern Caribbean Central Bank gives figures on the economy. You attack the, 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 the governor. Financial statements are prepared, you attack the auditor. It's really, it's something that's so strange, Mr. Speaker. The, I mean, the central bank, let me tell you, Mr. Speaker, the governor of the central bank, any minister of finance who knows anything about being a minister of finance would know that the governor of the central bank sometimes and sometimes we even believe he's the Minister of Finance for the region. The governor of the Central Bank, Mr. Speaker, is not appointed by any Prime Minister. The governor of the Central Bank is appointed by the Monetary Council. Mr. Speaker, when an opposition can, men can support its members attacking the Governor of the Central Bank, we are in a lot of trouble. What we are reaping, Mr. Speaker, we are going to sow. We are going to sow these things. What are you reaping? You 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 supported attacking the governor of the Central Bank, not attacking him on his performance, you know, but but attacking him on a report that he presented, Mr. Speaker. I, I hope that the National Trust will use this wisely. They will use that the National Trust will use the wave of VAT wisely so that they can continue their work for the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. I thank you.